Hello, this is Common Sense Professor, and we are going to start today by setting up a brand new program inside Studio 5000. If you haven't done so already, I've got two videos uh, before this that talks about setting up communications. Please be sure and watch that. So we're going to start by opening up Studio 5000 here. This is where we actually do the programming, and what we're going to do is we're going to do a new project, and this is where you select the CPU card that you're using. Now uh, we are going to be downloading to this PLC here in my PLC lab and if you notice here in slot 8 we have a L81E with version 32. So we're going to come over here and we're going to select the 5580 controller and ours is the first one here the 81E and we're going to name it and I'll just name this YouTube example. Then I hit next, and it's going to ask me the revision, and it was version 32. It's a 10 slot chassis, and I am in slot 8 here. Okay, so slot 8. All this is important. You need to know all this to set this up. Okay, now you can do this in a couple different ways. If you go back to video 1, I talk about using RS links or you can use a browser. And so I'm just using a browser to get all my information at this point. Once I've put the slot in, I'm going to hit finish, minimize this, and it's actually going to build the program based on the CPU card that I have. Once it finishes, you'll notice the controller organizer over here has a bunch of information. Okay, so we're ready to program now. So first, let me expand this, and then we'll talk about the actual Studio 5000 program in itself. Okay, you're going to notice several things here. One thing is here you can see the back plane, and then in slot 8 is the CPU card that we just entered in. At any time, you can right-click this and go to Properties, and this brings up the page that we entered in for our controller. You notice we're using an 81 controller, 5580, revision 32. There's my name and then my slot number. So if you accidentally get the wrong slot number or you want to change the name, you can do that by right-clicking the cards that you want to change. So what we need to do now is we've got in our I.O. configuration here, we need to add cards that we're going to be using. Now, I'm not going to use all the cards that's in this PLC, and so you only have to add the cards that you'll be using. So what I'm going to add is I'm going to add my IB16 in slot 0. Okay, That IB16 is an input card, digital input. Then I have a relay output card in slot 2 that I'm going to be using, slot 2 here. So let's start with this. I'm going to show you a shortcut way of doing this, then I'm going to show you an even shorter way of doing this. So when I click on this, I'm just going to highlight 1756 IB16, everything from the slash back, and right click and copy. Now I need to remember two things about this. It's in slot 0, and the re module revision is 2.004. So going back to your main screen here, again, we have to tell this PLC the cards that's inside of it, and where to look to find these cards. So I'm going to right click the back plane, go to new module, and then at this point I can scroll through this and find that card or I can come up here to this box, hit control V for paste, and then it brings up my cards. Mine is the first one. You need to be sure if you've got a 16D or I or whatever, you need to be sure if it's isolated inputs or high speed, you need to be sure and add that, okay, because it will not work if you if you add the wrong card. But mine's just an IB16, it's an older card, so I'm going to hit create. Now the first thing it's going to do is ask me to name it. I'm just going to name this input. The slot it's in, it's in slot 0, I don't have to change the slot here. And then the revision is automatically 3.001 which is not right, so I need to change that. Now here's the thing to remember about this, is that whenever you 
go to change that if you get the wrong this is called a major revision the two and the three that's major revision and this is your minor revision if you get the wrong major revision you can't edit that you have to delete the card and come back and re-enter it you can change the minor revision here okay so this was a 2.4 2.004 so we go to 2.004 then I hit OK yes now I've got the right revision I've got the right slot number and I'm going to hit OK now if you notice over here now I've got under my back plane, I've got my input card and my CPU card. Okay, so let's go back to our PLC and we're going to go to browse chassis again. Now we're going to add our output relay card. So I'm going to click this just like I did before. I'm going to select everything from the slash back. Now notice at this point I have an OW16i. So I'm going to go back to my PLC program, right click back plane. Go to new module, paste that into the catalog, and there's my card. So I'm going to select that, hit create. I'm going to name it. This will just be our output. This is in slot, if you remember, it's in slot 2. And I'm looking at module revision 2.001. So I changed this to slot 2, and I've Got to change my revision here, so let's change it to 2.001. Hit OK. Yes. Then I hit OK again. Now at this point I want to close it out. Those are the only two cards that I'm going to be using for this first program. Alright, so so far what you've done is you've opened up Studio 5000 and you've done the first steps into creating a new program because now you have your input and output cards. One thing about Control Logics 5000 and Studio 5000 that's different than the older Logix 500 is that all these programs are tag based. And we're going to look at that in just a minute. But if you come up here and at this point here you see that that's your, the name of your program in our CPU card. Underneath that you have controller tags. If you look down a little further under main task you've got a main program if I expand that I've got another section with local tags I can have several programs at this point with local tags but if I have my tags created under controller tags then I can use them in either program that I want to if however I have a tag in my main program tag that's more local I can't use that in another program and share the tags. So if you're going to share tags, then you're going to create your tags under control tags. This is going to be an extremely simple program, so it doesn't really matter where we save it at, but that's just something to keep in mind. Now I'm telling you this because I want to show you what we just did. We added an input and output card. If we double click controller tags, you notice here we've got local zero which that's in slot 0 and we've got a local 2 in slot 2 that's our input card and our output card okay we're going to look at this again we've got our input card if we go to local 0 i for input and expand that and we want to go to data because that's our inputs now we are looking at all of our inputs on that input card. The same with the output. Our output is on zero. So if we go to local two, zero, our output, I'm sorry, it's not local zero. So our output card is on local two, which is slot two. If we go to two output, we go to data. Now we can see all of our outputs, and they're all off right now, that's addressed with this output card. Okay, so now let's start programming. Let's create a simple program that where if we push a push button, we're going to turn a light on. Okay, that's all we're going to do. So if we have, let's say that we have a push button that's wired to our input channel zero, and we have a light that's connected to our output card 
channel zero that whenever that push button is pushed we're going to turn on the light now something to remember with Alan Bradley your slots start with zero and so do your channels let's go back up here a second we got our local zero input notice it starts with channel zero okay that's important to remember so let's go into let's start programming now if we go under our main routine and double click this this is where we program using ladder logic now these rungs uh, studio 5000 is just a little different because these rungs will show you if there's an error as you go through the older control logics 5000 would give you like little E's on the side or, or something like that if, if there was an issue if you had a, an error but this just has a red X and it shows you that there's a problem here and so you cannot have an empty rung in control logics and so it brings up this empty rung but it tells you you can't have that and so it's red okay now there's two bits that we're going to look at we're going to look at an XIC which is our examine if closed here and this is a little confusing this is one thing that Alan Bradley does it's that confuses a lot of people because that looks like a normally open and if you hover over it it says examine on but it's actually called an XIC this is an XIO and then this is our OTE our output enabled so what we're going to do is we're going to add one XIC to turn on an OTE or output whenever this is pressed so I'm just going to click my XIC and then I'm going to come over here and click my OTE now you notice I still have a red X there that's because remember I told you everything is tag based and we have to create a tag for this okay there are two types of tags that we can create there is a base tag which stays with inside your program it doesn't look outside so if you have a base tag let's say that we create this as a base tag it will never go to an output or we can create an alias and an alias will look at an address on your input or an address on your output and it'll actually turn something off or on based on your conditions inside your program so if we right click this question mark we go to new tag and there's several ways to create a tag but for starters this is the easiest way and I'm just going to call this PB1 for push button 1 and there are several rules that we have uh, when naming this you can't start with a number uh, you can't have spaces so those are just some rules whenever we name our tags here notice the type here okay this is a base remember base stays inside the program but we want to look at a button whenever we push it on input 0 so we're going to do an alias you notice whenever you do alias that we can select different addresses now now remember so this should look familiar we're pulling in these input and output addresses here so remember we're going to go to local 0 input so I select that and it expands it now we've got two choices we don't want fault we're not going to turn something on whenever that input is faulted we want our data and so we select data and you notice this arrow comes up we select that and we're going to select zero now we just address this bit to look at local slot zero input data channel zero when we hit create you notice now we've got our tag name and we've got the address that we're looking at we still have a red x here because we don't have a tag on our output now on our output I want to turn on a light in channel 0 of my output here and so I'll just call this light go down to type it's going to be an alias because again I want to turn on an output now my output is in channel 2 so I'll go to local 2 output stay away from the C and the I we're just going to channel 2 output and it looks like nothing happened but if you scroll down you'll notice that now we've got data and you can also see the tag that we created for PB1 we're going to go to data and we're going to do just like we did before we're going to hit the down arrow and select 0 now we've got an address local 2 output data 0 hit create notice the red X went away 
we just created our first program. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to download this program into our PLC. Again, if you go back to video one, we established communications with this PLC already. If you need to know how to do that, please go back and do that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say who's active, who active, and then we're going to pull in that Ethernet IP that we had before, and we are looking at PLC 21 here. Okay, so we're looking at 21. So we're going to go down till we find 21. We've got to scroll way down. I've got a lot of things in my lab here. So here's 21 here. I'm going to expand this, go to back plane, then I'm going to find my slot 8. And you see Henderson Day 3, that was a training that I just did. I'm going to download into this CPU card. Now this is a little confusing because we're used to uploading and downloading from the internet. And if we pull a program from the internet to our computer, we call that downloading. And if we take a file from our computer to the internet, we call that uploading. Well, PLCs are, is complete opposite. So if we're taking a program from our, from our computer and putting it into our PLC, that is downloading. And if we take a program from our PLC and bring it back to our computer, that's uploading. Just visually picture that your PLC is on the ground and you're standing above it with your laptop. And if you're pushing a program to that PLC, it's going down. And a program from that PLC to your computer is going up. So we're going to choose to download this. And then it says, are you sure you want to download over this file? Yes. So hit download again. Now, if you're using a serial connection, this will take a long time. Okay, now at this point it says, do you want to bring this back to remote? Yes, you do. All right, now we've downloaded it to our PLC, and you notice that this is green. This rung zero is green here. Okay, that means that we're running. Now, I'm going to push this button and watch my light. Okay, did you see that go off and on? That's because I physically pushed that button on input zero, and it passed the energy through to our light here. That is the most basic program that you can probably do inside a PLC. Now we're going to go offline a second. And what I want to do is I want to show you a shortcut way of creating, bringing in these input and outputs with Studio 5000. So if you select your rung here, so I'm just going to select zero and I hit delete, it deletes our rung that we just created here. Another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my tags here. I go to edit tags and I'm going to delete my tags. And so the way you do that is under edit tags, you hit the square to the left of the tag and just hit delete. All right. Now, the last thing I want to do is I'm going to delete my cards until the only thing I have left is my CPU card at this point. So this simulates us starting off from scratch whenever we first started our PLC program. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go up here to communication, who active, just like I did before. I'm going to select my CPU and I'm going to hit download. And what I'm doing right now is I'm downloading an empty program into my, my PLC so I can communicate with it. And I'm going to stay running. Okay, yes, I'm going to change it back to remote mode. Now, what I want to do is add my cards, the same cards I did before. I'm going to right click backplane and instead of going to new module, I want to go to discover modules. So I click to discover modules. What I'm doing right now is since I'm online, I am actually communicating directly with my PLC and it brings up those two cards. There's my input card in slot zero, my output card in slot two. There's that 5550 CPU card. There's my analog input and output and my ethernet card. So if I want to add these cards, all I have to do is come over here and hit create. I want to name it, input. It automatically brings in my revisions. I hit okay, yes. And then I'm going to create my output card. 
call it output. Again, notice it brings in my slots and my revision. Hit OK. Yes. Then I just close this out. Now you notice I've got the same thing I had before. But that's a little easier way of doing this. But I wanted to show you the older way because older revisions, you can't do this. This is an advantage of the newer revisions of control logics. All right, so I hope this has helped you out. Please take a moment to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Like this video and share it.